So first we said we have the preparation before Shema. Shema itself, the act of saying Shema, has the, the, a, a very spiritual, very strong spiritual power getting connected with Hashem. When we sing Shema Yisrael Hashem Roken Hashem Echad, we have to, to concentrate on each word, what, what it means. So the Arizal has mamash, you know, uh, explanations of each word, what the Kavanah has to be. We're not going to go through this now, but when we're saying Echad, when we're saying the Aleph, you know, Echad can be Echad, but we have to say, we have to, first of all, uh, I don't know how you say it in English, Leharich, like to make the whole word longer. Right. Echad, you have to meditate that Hashem is one. The, uh, this is on the Aleph. The Chet, we have to meditate that there's seven Rekiim. How do you say Rekia? It's not a sky. There's seven heavens, right? That's what it's called? So there's seven heavens and one uh, earth. And the Dalit goes on Dalit Ruchot Olam, the four corners of the world, which basically Aleph goes on Alufoshel Olam, goes on Hashem. Where is Hashem? Hashem is all over the place. He's in all the Rekim and in this world. And where else? All Dalit, the all four corners of the world. The Hashem is basically everything. You have to basically meditate how everything, Hashem Elokein, Hashem Echad. Everything is Echad. And this is what we have to meditate on the Echad. And the whole concept of Shema is what's called Achdut Hashem. And the Rizal actually says that when we're saying the word Echad, one has to meditate like as if he's Moser Nefesh, he's giving his, uh, his, his life away. Because the biggest, biggest mitzvah one can do is to die on Kiddush Hashem, to Limsor Nefesh. And we see that in all the history, the ones that were zochet to, to give their life away for the sanctifying the name of Hashem, they gave their life away by saying Shema Yisrael Hashem Noken Hashem Echad, being that, 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 that going to the highest level that, that I'm, I'm nothing, I'm giving my life to, the, to, the, to, to Kiddush Hashem. So when we say Echad, we have to concentrate on that, that one can elevate himself in a spiritual level to get to a point like as if he's Moser Nefesh. After we say the Shema, we say we're talking about these three sec sections that we create these Malachim, these 60 angels that surround our body. When we make it three times, 60 for the Ruach, 60 for the Nefesh, 60 for the Soul, for the Neshama. Then we go according to the Rizal, we do Vidui. Vidu is basically... Part of the, of the process of tshuva is confessing. If you didn't confess your sin out loud, then it's, your tshuva is not good. Then we do, after we do vidu, we do, we take on ourselves all the four mitot bedin. We're basically saying, because I can basically take on myself and I can, with my word, create, like how we said in the beginning, my words are so powerful, not mine, everybody's words are so powerful, and we can create a reality with our words. That's why the Shonara is so bad, because we create that reality. And basically, Hasidus explains why, well, okay, I understand it's not nice to gossip, fine. But why is it so bad? Because if I say something about a certain person with my mouth, I actually create that in that person's life. So if I say, oh, look at this guy, he's so cheap, I arouse with my mouth this cheap quality in him. And if I say that person is such and such, with my words I create that in that person. That's why Lashon Arai is so bad because I'm basically, it says, the, the Gemara says, the, 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 the Lashon it uses is katla, means chops off. Lashon Arai basically kills but in a chopping off. Why? Because it says, the Gemara says that Lashon Arai kills the one who said it, the one who heard it, and the one that it was said on. The Lashon Ara is so severe because it literally cuts off the entity of the person. And whatever I say with my words, I actually bring it on that person. So that's why we, we take on ourselves here the four mitot beidin, and we say it with our mouth. We have to say the bidui. After that, we say, there's many... Kabbalistic ex explanations behind this seven uh, verses that we say. Uh, another thing from Darizal, he says that when we read it, we should know the verse off by heart and look at the abbreviations of the letters of the side. I don't know if you have it in your CD. We have it? 
Riza says you should say you should actually say the verse, but don't look, read the verse. Rather, look at the abbreviations. We, we don't have it on in in um in Kesh 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 we have it on Chadodi or in okay. Shachar Shachar in the morning. So in the Sidur of the Riza, we we say Aram Bechoach uh, after Vidui. We see you see that even in Yom Kippur, in certain places, we say Aram Bechoach. Aram Bechoach, the combination of all the words, according to Kabbalah, has powers that we cannot even understand what they do. So you're not supposed to say, you're just supposed to look at the abbreviations? You Technically, if you don't know it, then you have to say it. But if you know already how to say it off by heart, the Rizal says you have to look at the abbreviations. If you look at the Sidur... Oh, you're saying say it while looking at the Exactly. So not read the words, Alam Bechor, Gedulat, Rather say it, but look at the Alek Bet Gimel Yud, yud Taf Tzadik. And, cons- and meditate on the abbreviations. After that we say Mizmor uh, Le David, another capital of Tehillim. This is the capital we say after uh, Vidui, in, in, uh, in mainly in Mincha, because here we basically, the end of it, it says, Al teshlicheni milfanecha, ve'uruch kodshecha atikach mimeni, don't throw me away from you, don't take your ruach kodesh from me, hashiva li sason nishecha, like bring, bring me back closer to you. We're basically saying to Hashem, okay, now I'm clean, but please, please, you know, accept me back, back. In the end, we actually say something nice. Alamda poshim v'checha v'chatayim elech Yeshua tzileni midamim elokim elokei tishotit alanen shonit zikatecha. Hashem sefatay tifach ofi giti latecha. We're basically telling Hashem, it's like a, a praising Hashem, but after you forgave me because of all the work that I did, please accept me back again. Uh, here we say a few more verses again. I don't know if you have it in your uh, nosach. First of all, we say Shila Ma'alot, which is basically uh, another capital that we say when we do tshuva. And then we say three times Gad Gedu De Gudenu. Do you say that? Okay, this is I think more of the nosach of the Rizal. We say three times Gad Gedu De Gudenu. We are good. A kiv ya good, very good. Then we do Gad. I don't remember. Where is that from? That what is that from? Where is that from? Uh, the 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 actual verse is from Bereshis. God gedu de gudenu, but the the it's a bracha for God, right? Uh, it's it's when they were talking about the shvatim, mm-hmm. when uh, Yaakov was talking about each shevet. Yeah. It's very weird uh, verses for each shevet. Like right. does nothing make sense? Right, right. But on God, he says God gedu de gudenu, v'hu yagud akev. So the Rizal says that for the other way around, a kev yagud vehu yagudenu gedud gad. I don't know, uh, you know, this is already more of a Kabbalistic thing, but uh, many years ago I learned why, what's the gad gedud yagudenu. Gad, uh, yagud, has the same letters of dag, of a fish. And the fish, we know that the ayin ara lo sholet badag. Because, you know, that's why a lot of people, they put the, the fish and they put the eye of the fish. The, eye, the fish has a certain uh, power to repel Ayn Ra. So in Kabbalah, it explains, you know, I don't know how it's connecting it to Dafka to God. But we read that verse, but he's saying it twice. He's saying, God, you do the good of the cave. This is the, the verse from the Pausha. And then he's saying it the other way around. A cave, you good. Who you good, you God. If you want to remember, we'll do another shio once explaining, uh, according to Kabbalah, each verse why we say. Then we say, "Im tishkav lo tifchad b'shachavta v'arvash natecha." Each one is saying three times, going the same thing, going on the nefesh. It's basically putting spiritual levushim on the nefesh, on the ruach, on the neshama. After that, we say, "Betov alin akitz berachamim." This is just quoting different verses. After we say, "Ata seder limitar titzani rane tefalet tesoironi sela." This is a verse from Tehillim. It's basically uh, what it means is Hashem wrapping your neshama around with like uh, like 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 his wings. I don't know how to, to translate it even. Later on, we see to the end of so as machot panech and imot nimchayz. He's basically saying a few more verses. Then he's quoting from uh, again. From, uh, from another a middle shop to heal him, kidnap to moon the home, and like I had this man, a car, a do you ever do my own to watch my feet to be at half kid okay? He's basically saying that you uh, that Hashem is the ruler over the land, but here he adds something very interesting that he says, be at half kid okay, but it out here, Hashem Kelement. 
Here comes a very inter in interesting uh, reason why we say that. Uh, I think pidion, uh, how do you call it in English? How do you say pidion in English? Redeem. Re to redeem. To redeem? Yeah. Okay. So if I now, if a person owes me money and he gave me something as a collateral, he gave me, for the sake of the example, he gave me his car, and that person owed somebody else's money. So the third party person cannot come to me and tell me he owns me he owes me money, give me his car. I'm sorry, my car is my pigeon right now, you can't touch it. So we say we give a shem our neshama. We basically say, take my ruach, take my neshama, I'm giving to you as a pigeon. Which means you're holding the neshama. So when the Samech Mem comes to grab the neshama, Shem says, I'm holding it right now, you can't touch it. Even if that person is Chayab, let's say that person is a Rasha, before he went to bed he did a very big sin, that day he did something, and according to the, you know, to be careful not to go down on the tablecloth, according to base Din Shel Mala, he's Chayab anything, but nothing, you know, the Motzila Poal can't do anything. Why? The Nefesh is right, the Shem is holding. That's my Pidyon. Hashem is holding it as a, as a uh, uh, how did you call it? Collateral. Collateral. But Hashem is basically holding right now the nefesh, so he says, you can't touch it. Then we say another Libon Olamim. Uh, I know a lot of people don't say it, but when I first became religious, my rabbi told me, this is one of the most important parts of the Kiyat Shema. I'll read it to you. Libon Olamim, Matav Barato Olamcha B'Yertzoncha Atov. Master of the universe, you created the world with your good will. Exactly how it came up in your mind. You created the heaven, you created the Tzva Shamayim, the whole army of the heavens. You created the earth and everything on it. And you created a man on this world. And what did you do? You put a, a, a neshama, you blew a neshama into his uh, body. Why? So he will recognize how great you are and, how, and, and praise you. And you enliven everybody. Why? Because Hashem is the source of all the neshamot. And you are the chayut of every little thing that is alive. Going back again, and I'm not only giving my neshama, I'm giving my nishmati, ruchi, venafshi, I'm giving all three to Hashem. Because a lot of people think that, you know, when the neshama goes up, the neshama goes, just the neshama goes, but even according to Pshat, to Gemara, the Gemara says, no, you have the nefesh ruach and the neshama, everything has to be pretty protected. So he was saying, Be'adcha, afkid ruchi nefshi ve'nishmati. Where? Be'adcha, Torah ve'nemana. Hashem is the most trusted person to give my neshama to. Mata Hashem rukait et tahir ota mikol tumah. So basically, I'm basically telling to Hashem, I'm giving it to you, I have no way of doing it. You have the ability to clean my neshama from all the tumah. Because I'm what do you want from me? I live in this world, I'm involved in everything in this world. Of course I'm going to my neshama is going to get all dirty. You're going to give it back to me clean and relaxed and, and, uh, and uh, all replenished. And then uh, we say, Why are you going to do that? Because you know, you listen to our prayers. That's where we want to have some Torah with us. And after that, we have to say already that everybody is, is chayav in it. But the last part is basically saying, it's almost like, you know, after Yom Kippur, you come out of Shul, ah, I feel so replenished and so good, and Hashem washed up all my sins. But what do we do right after that? We build a sukkah, and we go and we have a party for the whole week. And, and basically we're basically showing our celebration that Hashem forgave us. And we have a whole festival and we, 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 we enjoy the whole week. So the same way we do here, the, okay, Hashem already forgave me for everything I did this day. But now, you know, we're, we're basically doing the, the sukkahs of, of Kriyat Shema Alamita. So 
This is the short version of why we say Kriyat Shmona Mita. The main thing to remember for it is the women are also Chayav in Kriyat Shmona Mita. And better to do even the whole thing, not, not the short version. To do the whole thing, it takes about 10 minutes. But uh, don't let the Yetzirah come and tell you, ah, you had a long day, go to sleep right now. The thing is like this. The Eta, the, is if Chas Shalom a person can do the whole Kriyat Shema Lamida, is at least should be, you know, Moser Nefesh, just to, at least to say Shema. Just the whole three verses of Shema. Because the, 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 this demon will come and do anything he can to stop you from saying Kriyat Shema Lamida. And I know from many places that I go, most people don't say Kriyat Shema Lamida. They're like, I didn't know I had. I didn't know I have to, who, who cares about Kriyat Shema Lamida? I say Shema Yisrael when my head is on the pillow. Shema Yisrael is not enough, you have to say the whole thing. So, you know, being humans and involved in this world, and being involved in this world naturally makes us further away from Hashem and etc. etc. Et so Hashem gave us a present that within 10 minutes we can have a, a mini Yom Kippur and completely clean everything around us. That when we leave our body, first of all, the body stays all guarded and protected. But this is one thing that is the most important, because when we leave the body, and all these chitzonim come and suck off the kedusha from the body, in physical way, a person wakes up, everything that happens to him, we call it mentally. It's not mentally, it's more spiritually. But to say a person is mentally, he's depressed, he's sad, he's this, he has also mental problems, he doesn't have any mental problem. There's nothing wrong with his with his mind. His nefesh is not lo teora. The nefesh is 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 uh, spiritually dirty, and that's what makes all the moods and anxieties, all the, the the mental problems that we think that we have. It originates from the nefesh because the nefesh is 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 dirty. Not the neshama. Neshama is chelik aloka. The neshama is perfect, but the spiritual entity in the body, the nefesh, when a person goes to sleep, and these chitzonim come, they, what's called metame et nefesh. It makes our nefesh dirty, and this basically trickles down to all the problems that we have here. The other level, that what it does, is when it metame the ruach, that's when people get sick. All the chalaim reim, all the sicknesses that we have, it originates from a spiritual. That's why they say in different sources, if a person's sick, go see what he's doing wrong in, in ruchnius, that will, will cure the physical. In anything, in every uh, sickness, there's a spiritual remedy to that because everything comes down to the world is what's called Seder Hishtav Shelut. It originates from somewhere in spiritual. It came from somewhere spiritual. It can't be, there's nothing physical that just was born here. Everything that we have, everything trickles down from the spiritual level. So even cavities, <laughs> even cavities, they come down, there's a Seder Hishtal Shelut, why it come down, and everything originates from somewhere. So every sickness that we have, every mental problem that we think that it's mental, there's nothing wrong with our mind. Unless a person takes severe medication and drugs that actually ruin the, 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 the brain. But other than that, our, our issues, they come from the nefesh. And that's why Kriyat Shema Ramita is so powerful, because the, you, you're basically cleansing the nefesh. Forget about the soul right now, it's the nefesh that, that is part of the body. The, the Hasidic philosophy explains that the neshama is so pure it can't go into the body. That's why a very small piece of the neshama is in the body. The neshama has five levels. The highest level of the neshama is called Yechida. It's basically sitting next to Hashem, it doesn't go down even. Then there's what's called Chaya. Is, we know it as the aura, it's like this spiritual entity around our body. So we know it as aura. Uh, uh, it's basically what's called a tselem eloki. It's like, it's such a holy piece of our soul, it cannot even penetrate in the body. And then we have neshama, nefesh and ruach. The neshama that we have in our body is maybe not even 1% of the actual neshama, it goes into the body and we know the neshama, the dwelling place is in the brain. The nefesh, we read in the Tana, in Torah that it says Hanefesh Hu Adam. The blood is where the nefesh is, is basically is. And we know that the place of the nefesh is in the heart. Uh, the exact way that, where is the nefesh exactly in the dam? Since the, the, the blood has a temperature to it, 
the blood is constantly bubbling in our, in our body. That's why when a person is sick or is about to die, the temperature drops down because the chayut that comes from the nefesh is slowly, slowly going down. But the, because the blood is constantly bubbling and there's a certain temperature, there's a certain vapor that goes out from the blood constantly. And this is where the nefesh is. The, the connection, the mediate between the physical and the spiritual. So the nefesh is constantly in the blood. That's why when a person, what did they used to do once in the olden days to kill somebody? They made a lot of cuts. It says about Cain, when he killed Hevel, how did he kill him? He stabbed him all over the body. Why? Rashi says, because he didn't know where the nefesh will come out from. That's what Rashi says in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Parsha. He stabbed him so many times because he didn't know where the nefesh is coming out from. He, they, were, they, were, they were still in a level that we can't understand. He knew the nefesh goes out from the blood. So he made holes in his body. So the nefesh is dwelling in the blood. And since we know that according to the physical part of the body, you know, the blood gets pumped in and out from the heart, so the nefesh sits in the heart. And the ruach sits in the liver. The, 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 the same way that the liver is basically is in control of the entire, which I don't even know how to call it, but the, like, like the livelihood of the body. If chas v'shalom there's any problem with the liver, then the body is not functioning the right way. The ruach is in the, in the liver. So when a person... Falling asleep? Mm. A cup of coffee? She's so good. <laughs> She's so good. You don't have any notes. <laughs> we have a quiz when we go home. Uh, so when a person goes to sleep, I actually got sidetracked how we got to the Nefer and the Neshama. But the thing is, when the person leaves the body, uh, the all, all the levels of the, the, the soul leave the body. The, the Ruach, the Neshama, the, 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 the Nefesh, everything goes with it. So it's, that's how so important it is because the, that since the nefesh is very connected to the body, so every problem that the nefesh has, it, it comes out through the body. And any problem that the ruach has, it will affect the body in a more physical way. Mm -hmm. the, the, the ruach will affect more the, the health of the person and the nefesh will affect more the mental part of the, of the person. And, and we learn from that how important the Kriyat Shema Lamita is because when you clear you, when you purify, I think it's the wrong word to say, how do you say letahel? Purify, it seems like you're spraying uh, mm -hmm. something to purify the air. Is there enough, another word or you say purify? Yeah? Cleanse. Yeah? Cleanse. Cleanse. The, 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 the Lashon in Hebrew says letahel et anefesh, letahel from the word tahara. The same way a person goes into a mikveh to be taho, to be uh, pure. So we have to let the hell at the nefesh. And we have to do whatever we can to keep the nefesh from being dirty. Because this is the, where all, all the problems in many different ways originate from. So, A, we know the importance to guard the body. B, guard it to make sure that nothing happens to the body when we leave. And more important for all the things that we do that are un, you know, unwanted and we create all these demons and unfortunately we do a lot of them because like Mara even says that every sin that a person does, he creates this malach. And if chas v'shalom a person doesn't do tshuva in his lifetime and he doesn't kill it, these malachim, they, they, they wait for the neshama, they, they wait around him. There's a whole concept that, like I said before, that when a person does an avera, the malach that he creates looks like him. And it's considered his son. I'm talking about the Avera that what we talked about before. And there's a Minhag Yerushalayim that when Chas V'Shalom a father dies, the sons don't uh, escort him to the grave. Because if the physical sons will escort the father to the grave, if Chas V'Shalom, that man, has spiritual sons, they will escort him to the grave. And you can't even imagine the, the, the level of sorrow that the soul will get that the spiritual sons, these demons, will escort the neshama also. So there's a, it's, it's a minhab. Many people still follow it. That the sons, they stay behind. They take the, the body. Once it's over, ready there, then the sons are ready to come. Just so the, the, the spiritual, if chas v'shalom, the, the man has even one spiritual son, that he shouldn't go and scream out there, Abba, Abba, because for the neshama, it's something we cannot understand, the suffering of it. So, 
you can, you know, I'm sure you can find also online like the Nosach of the Ari and see, uh, you know, if you want to... But I'm uh, certainly say like the three times, like you should have to easy, you say that. And First of all, you can find online. I know I, I have the app of, of the, the my, in my sitter, the, they have the, the, the Nosach of the Ari. But I'm sure also on Chabad.org you can... Uh, download the, the, the copy or just buy a Siddur, you know, you know, it's not a must, like, I, I said it the wrong way, it is a must, because we have such an opportunity, Hashem gave us such a, 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 a the Gemara calls it a matana, Hashem gave us basically like a freebie, here a coupon, to, 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 to basically eliminate what you can do in a lifetime of Jew, what you do in 10 minutes of day, saying Kriyat Shema Lamita. And we have no redo in ours. No, we don't video it at Can all. Can you add all. that to ours? You think you yeah. could cut and paste? Uh, I would probably yeah. either just do. I wouldn't cut, cut and paste. Okay. Either just do this or do this. Uh, but the video sounds like the important part. According to the Rizal, according to Kabbalah, the video is the, is the highlight of the Kriyat Shema Lamita. And there's no words to stress. Because like when you were asking me, maybe we learned something about Kriyat Shema. I remember certain ma'amarim about that. The, there's no words to stress the, the, the importance of Kriyat Shema Lamita. Yeah. What it does, what it affects, how it affects. Half the things that we say we don't really understand. But even you see in the physical way, when a person has a business, he doesn't do his business calculations every day. He does it once a year. How much money did I spend? What did I spend it on? He does a, what's called a cheshben at the end of the year to see if I invested the money right, I didn't invest it right, where, where can I cut off? Maybe I should put more money into this, less money into that. The business owner doesn't do it every day. So the same way in the spiritual, you do it once a year in Yom Kippur. But at the end of the day, even the business owner at the end of the day is like, okay, how was my day? You know, did I have enough customers today? How much money I made today? Every business owner looks at his bank account. Well, how much money I made? You, if you don't have your hand on the on your on the, on your on your pulse every day, I don't know how much money is in the bank account. I gave out checks. Maybe the checks will bounce. You're constantly following the business because if you for one second you'll pull out, you don't know what's going on there. So the same way in a, in a spiritual level. The Kriyat Shema Lamita is basically summing up the day, saying, okay, I had a beautiful day today, let me sit for five minutes on my bed, let me sit, think what I did. Did I dive in enough? Did I, did, you know, did I study today? Was I a nice mommy? Was I a nice husband? Like, how, what, what did I do today? Maybe I should do chuvasa. Maybe I was not so nice today to my wife. And maybe I should apologize to her. Maybe she's, a, maybe she's upset at me. I said something not nice this morning. Or maybe I said something bad to my employee, my neighbor. We don't, sometimes we don't uh, follow our acts and you don't know who's, who you heard on the way, you know, there's many things. So Kiyat Shmona Mita is the first time that you do your Cheshbon Nefesh, you do Tshuva. You clap on Chit, you actually... Yeah, you do video, yeah, Mamash, not like Yom Kippur, you know, five pages, right. but you do Mamash, Hashem no Magan no Otzach no Rene Arizal says every, every hit, a thousand, one hundred and fifty, and twenty-five uh, of, these, of these Chevre. This is not something to take with a root rosh. Ariza says for that particular sin we're talking about, a man needs to fast 84 times for one time. So you're here in one, five minutes, you killed a thousand. You know, this, this is a matana. And unfortunately, since we are involved in this world and, and we're part of this world, Natanya says, Amit Abeki Menubal Mit Nabel. If you're fighting with somebody dirty, you get dirty. So it doesn't mean we have to like say, oh, you know, I don't want to be involved in this world and lock myself in a yeshiva, I don't want to be involved in this world. We have to be involved in the world, but we have to know that since we're involved in the world, we're getting dirty. So the same way that I go outside to work physically and I come home sweaty, I'm going to take a sh shower because I want to be clean. So the whole day I was involved in the world, I was seeing things that I'm not supposed to see, I was saying things that I'm not supposed to say, I was involved in things. So I'm not perfect, I'm a human being. But in all this dirt, I was sifting through the dirt, because that's my job in this world, to sift through the dirt and to take the good out and leave the dirt. This is what's called the Avodat and all day long we do it. Am I allowed to eat this? Oh, it's not kosher, I can't eat it. 
bam, I did a biru. I didn't touch something unkosher. I came to a certain place, oh, I'm not supposed to go in here, I'm not supposed to look at this, I'm not supposed to do that. All day long, we're sifting tovera, tovera. We're doing about that berurim. So, but we still get dirty. Nothing wrong with getting dirty. Somebody told me yesterday, I spoke in, I spoke in Boer Park, uh, like this group of Hasidim. Somebody told me, you want to go lie on, on the couch? No? Want to put your head down? Uh, somebody told me, why are you going to speak your story to the, to the, you know, these are like Hasidim? And I was like, they also need to hear it. They also need to do tshuva. But, uh, but uh, somebody told me yesterday, but what happens if you leave this world and you didn't do tshuva on one thing? They were like very caught on this, like, what if I miss my opportunity to do tshuva? So I told him, you know, if you look at an avera as something real bad, then you have a problem. Because when Hashem puts you in the place of to doing a sin, you kind of have to say thank you for Hashem for trusting your ability to do it and then also to be able to do tshuva. Because Hashem basically put you in a situation because when a person does chas v'shalom a sin, he goes all the way down to the lowest level. But in that domain, there's a godly spark that needs to be released and brought out to Hashem. So almost like, let's say, imagine they wanted to kill Bin Laden a couple of years ago. Who, who, would they send? who did they send there? Did they send a couple of, uh, you know, regular soldiers? No, they send the, the Navy SEALs, the most well-trained killers to go in there, kill him, and go out. Who can do it? Only a fully trained commando. We are the same thing. When Hashem sends you to a very sophisticated, dangerous task, He says, I have full confidence in you that you can go down there and go all the way to the worst place in the world where the klipot are and all these spiritual dirt because there's a mitzot zeloki, there's this godly spark there for you to reach out and get it out. And the same way like the commando go on a, on a mission, somebody might get hurt on the way, but they're doing it with Sirut Nefesh, with us what we do here. We come down to this world, the world of Klipot, to release these godly sparks that got spreaded around the universe before the world was created. A lot of people think that, you know, when they said, uh, that when, when they left, Mitzrayim, it says Ve'erev Rav Alayim Ahem Rav is, is, is the, the amount of the Nitzutot Kedusha that they took out from Mitzrayim so there was a, there's an opinion that they said when the Jews came out of Mitzrayim they took out all the Nitzutot Kedusha that's it, we're finished no, 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 there's still much more Nitzutot Kedusha in this world that we have to elevate so when a person faces the, 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 a sin if Chaz Shalom, of course the person has to prevent from doing the sin, but if he already did it, I'll, I'll, you know, Rabbi Nachman says, don't, 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 and you, don't be despaired, because you have the ability to do tshuva. And if you do tshuva, what's called tshuva ma'ava, then the Gemara says that his sins become merits. So Hashem basically gives you this matana that you can reach up, to, go to the lowest level and reach up to the highest, highest level. But to sum it up, you know, unfortunately, since we're involved in this world, so Kriyat Shema Amitai is the time that you can clean, clean everything around you and make sure that your tshuva gets accepted. So, I don't know if you have more questions. I try to kind of quetch everything in it as much as possible. There's much more. It's maybe in another time we'll learn some more longer Maimari. It's Mamash dissecting every little piece. That, uh, that makes you more understand when you read from the book, you know, an autopilot, then you don't really know what you're reading, and you just read it because they told you to read it. But when you actually learn every little verse what it means, and you're like, wow, now I understand what it says. There's a book that it's called Perusha Milot, and it's like a Hasidic book, it's very, very thick with microscopic letters, it takes you five years just to go through it. But it gives you Hasidic explanations on each thing that we read, what, 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 why we read it, what does it correspond to, where does it originate from. And it makes you understand it so well that when you pray, you're like, wow, I understand what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. I understand why I'm saying this verse, and why I'm saying that verse, and why, why right now I'm saying this. And this has an order, you can't mix up the order. You can't you know, say, okay, now I feel like reading this page, and I'll go back to that page. You have a certain order. The Chachami, when they made the Siddur, there's a certain order why we say everything. Everything has to come in the exact same order. So, 
but באמת, regardless to the, to the, to the sure, one of the first things that I was taught is קריאת שמע למיטה is don't miss it, doesn't it? If you dead tired, wake up and say קריאת שמע למיטה. And like my rabbi, a very long time ago, I told him what is more important, to say קריאת שמע with my clothes, or to say, and it's not close to going to bed, I want to come home alone and be with suit, I want to put like, a, you know, something comfortable. So when I want to say Kiyat Shema, I'm, I'm not dressed appropriate. So I told him what is more important, being dressed the right way, but it's not Samuch to go into sleep, or to say it right before I go to sleep, but I'm already in pyjama. So he said, well, either if you want to wear pyjama, first of all, he, he, this is the, the level of this man, he told him, he told me, why would you not be dressed, uh, you know, uh, uh, around the house, even when before you go to sleep? I told him, why? You wear a suit till the, the minute before you go to sleep? He's like, what else am I going to wear? <laughs> like, uh, like I, I come home, I put, you know, a, a tracksuit with a nice comfortable pants and I want to be comfortable. He's like, what? He's like, I, I, I'm dressed like this till I go to sleep. I say shmai, then I take off my clothes and I go to sleep. So he told me, no, 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 better if you say it's uh, dressed and samuch <laughs> But, <laughs> but he, he, So he told me, he told me, the only time that I will give you a discount is to say it far away from, from when you go to sleep is Friday night. Because all week long, you sleep two hours a night. I know that Friday you're like already fainting. So if this chas v'shalom will be an a, 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 a option that you're not going to say kiyat shmal amita because you're just going to crash on the couch, say it further away, even if even because after kiyat shmal you're not allowed to eat and you're not to do anything. Once you say kiyat shmal, that's it. You have to go to bed. So he says this is the only time I'm allowing you to say even if it's an hour before you go to bed, just that chas v'shalom won't be the option that you miss it. Then I allow you to to say it an hour before you go to bed and maybe if you need to eat something or drink something. So that's how particular he was like, don't, whatever happens, don't, don't miss the Kriyat Shema Lamita. And my daughter shouldn't hear it, but my kids, since they know how to talk, they say Kriyat Shema Lamita. I, from this age already, they know they go to bed. They, the whole thing? Yeah. Well, not the whole thing. My three-year-old can't say the whole thing, but he says at least Shema. Right. But they have a set of Avodah. They go, you know, brush their teeth, wash their hands, but then take the, the first the physical part, then they take the Negavosa, put it next to the bed, they say Kriyat Shema, they do everything that they have to do. But even now, my two-year-old, he barely speaks, but he says the, the tune, he copies his brothers, he says the tunes, like he thinks he says, he covers his eyes, and he's saying, like, ah, 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 you know, he, he thinks he's saying. But from such an early stage, we already put into them that it's like national. My, my, my older son, he's seven. He, if chas v'shalom, he falls asleep, they have a minhag in our house. At Friday night, they sleep on the couches. That's their thing. They camp out in the, in the living room. So sometimes they play, then they just crash on the couches. And he's so special, he sometimes he wakes up. Oh, I forgot to say Shema. Uh, you know, he wakes up like this and he says Shema. Half, he's half sleeping, he says Shema. He puts his yamaka, he's like, hey, you know, if I could record it, it would be like real funny. But it's amazing that he's seven years old, he has already the, in his system, that how can I go to sleep without saying Shema? He wakes up and he says Shema, even he's <coughs> modeling it, and he goes back to sleep. That's how, how important this particular time of the day is. Some, some say, you know, that if you have to compare all four times you say the prayers, that's the most important prayer of the day. You, you can have five prayers in a day. Shacharit, Birkat Amazon, Mincha, Mayrev, and Kirat Shmona Mita. You kind of, it's not a chiyuv, but you're supposed to say at least once a day Birkat Amazon. You have to have a, a seuda. Most people don't do it. It's called, you know, Pat of Pat Shacharit. You finish Shacharit, you go and learn, you, go, you do a seuda, you have to eat uh, bread, bench, and then you continue your day. So it's not mamash achiyuv, but a, a, a man should try at least five times a day to do shacharit min chavit and one time of uh, benching and kriyat shmal amita. So here it's on that you all have the koch every night now, even if you're tired, to say kriyat shmal amita, the whole, the whole version. And with, with your special prayers, Hashem, should grant you and us and everybody to be completely free from the klipa. It says when Mashiach comes, 
להעביר את רוח הטומאה מן הארץ. When משיח will come, השם takes all the tומאה and pushes it away, and we're not going to have any more clipper, we'll be back to the state how Adam הראשון was, when there was no, no tומאה. So there wasn't, there's no death, no hardship, no wars, no disease, nothing. That's משיח times. So בעזרת השם, we, we should be זוכר, if all עם ישראל will be particular of saying קריאת שמע למידה, will kill so much of these clipot, that בדרך ממילא משיח will be נסגלה, and will be with משיח in Yerushalayim. Amen. Forever and ever. Yeah.